Hey, welcome back. The last project ended up looking really good, but the super clean style of painting is not really my kind of thing. It's okay now and then, but I would rather be painting other things. Which is why I'm going to paint these guys. I don't really know what they are, but they've been in my bag for a couple months now. I don't even know where they came from or who they are. I know however that these are some musclely guys with axes and knives, which has got me really excited to paint them. Biological minis allow for a lot of expressive detailing and often look their best when they're not perfect, which is why I want to paint these guys fast and loose and really have fun painting them. I plan on using brushes that I haven't used in a while, mostly because they're absolutely destroyed. This should help add like extra texture to them and prove that like you don't need perfect brushes in order to make good looking minis. I've been using basically the same sets of like packs of 50 multi packs that uh, you can buy from Amazon for literally months at this point because I don't mind destroying them. Um, it's a lot easier than uh, trying your best to keep like one 15 pound paintbrush around. Uh, when you can just keep swapping out a 40p one. You don't really have to think about, oh, am I using speed paints or metal paints? How often do I need to change the water in my water cup? Like, when it just stops having a point, you can just throw it in the bin and start with a new one. But hey, despite this being like a more relaxed paint job, I'm still going to be using some of the more advanced techniques in my skill palette that should help make these guys look pretty nice. Because I have a plan for them. I've been playing Blackstone Fortress and I kind of want to make my own homebrew set of guys for them. And I think these are going to be perfect. Um, now, obviously, these are Age of Sigma, not 40k, um, but I think I have a purpose for these five melee big muscly guys that should make for some fun rules. When buying things from eBay, they often come badly snipped, this is so they don't damage the model, so I'm still going to have to cut off all of the little edge bits that they've left. I also organized them all into little bags, this so I can keep them together whilst I uh, glue them. So after assembling all of these guys, like I can tell that they're corn, but from what I can tell, I think they're blood reavers. Now, I'm not really too familiar with anything that is in the Age of Sigma, so the chances are I've probably got that wrong. So I'm going to start by primering them. I'm going to use a brush primer. Uh, so that I can just sit here and do it all in one go. I don't have to take them outside or anything like that. And then I'm going to give a quick coat with uh, some titanium white paint. Now, if I was doing this uh, as perfect as possible, I would probably use a couple of coats of white paint just to get rid of any of the streaks from the brush primer. But it doesn't really matter if it shows up on these guys because it's going to add to the texture. I'm then going to do a lot of the skin texturing by uh, slack brushing. It's where you get a big brush and you fully coat all of the bristles in the color of choice and then treat it almost like dry brushing. It's basically dry brushing but with more material. I'm going to do this with a skin tone, uh, a dark red for the top. Uh, a dark blue for the bottom and then kind of a burnt brownie color for the rest of the skin over the top and then I will go back over it with the original skin tone this should leave basically just small amounts of the colors that I've just brushed over giving a lot of variation and bringing it all together as one kind of homogeneous skin color now I've basically painted the highlights, but there's nothing in the recesses due to slag brushing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a fairly dark colored wash to go over it and this should fill in the recesses. Now you may have noticed that I was using the uh, upturned base 
of one of these guys. Uh, this is a really good cheat way of uh, having cups that you don't really care about. Uh, I had those little makeup dishes which are usually used for things like speed paints as they can't be used on regular palettes as they'll absorb into wet palettes and they'll also rehydrate if you use them on any other surface which means you kind of have to do it as a one use or you have to keep washing them out. Now I left these overnight to dry so I haven't actually seen them yet. I think they look pretty good. They've got like a nice skin tone to them, um, looking fairly detailed all things considered. Um, and I'm pretty, normally I would be pretty happy with how these look but I've got a set art direction that I plan on going with these so this is basically just step one. Because of that I need to adjust it a little bit. I needed it to be higher contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a very thin Gravelord Grey and paint that on afterwards. This should increase the amount of shadows that are on the model, providing a higher contrast which is something I can work with. Now whilst these dry I'm going to work on the bases. I've already attached a little bit of green stuff to them to give them more terrain to work with and I'm going to add some Vallejo earth texture to kind of make it all look more environmental. I use this stuff quite a bit when making bases just because it works really really well. I'm just going to smush it on with a sculpting brush and there's not really much you need to do to it, it kind of just looks like dirt as it goes. Now these take at least 24 hours to dry so I'm going to put these on this little bit of scrap ELA that I have and work on them probably tomorrow. Now that these guys have dried they're looking a lot better. I did make the mistake of uh, not sealing the first layer of speed paint in which means they've blended together a little bit on the model but unless you're really looking for it it's not that noticeable it's totally fine. Apparently that's something that they fixed with the new Speed Paint 2.0. I'll have to give them a go at some point. Now it's time for some aggressive dry brushing. I really want to bring a lot of the highlights back to white and leave the skin tone that I've just made uh, in the recesses. This is going to involve a lot of dry brushing as the more you dry brush the more paint you leave on the model. Um, it also increases the coverage of that white as well as it rubs against more surfaces that it doesn't normally touch. I'm going first over with a lot of white but I'll also go over with the original skin tone that I used as well as some pinky colours. Now I'm going pretty hard with the pink colour, I think it's going really really well. What I did add as well to this pink was some fluorescent red. This is going to really change the colour and it actually works really really well. Making the whole kind of thing look really fleshy and kind of uh, like sunburnt is kind of the colours that I was going for. Now as much as this was working really really well I had offloaded so much paint onto these models that I end up dry brushing them back over again with white. Um, now this kind of goes not the best, uh, I don't think it looks particularly great so what I did after that was then dry brush pure fluorescent paints over the top as well. This works really really well and it just made everything look so bright and vibrant. Now I have a video talking about how to work with fluorescent paints and the main takeaway is how transparent they are which is why it's perfect for dry brushing over a white. Now this is where the main colour scheme starts to come into play. I'm going to be mixing two washes on the models themselves. One of them is going to be this kind of bright orangey colour and the other one's going to be a purpley pink. Now using a gradient with speed paints is actually a really effective way of getting a good gradient in your work. As long as you pick things that mix well together, you should be able to get what is already quite a nice gradient. Now 
my models already have a good gradient on them. I dry brushed majority of the pink up on the top of the shoulders and abs and things like that and left quite deliberately the base skin underneath which had already a lot of blue tones from underneath when we originally did the slack brushing. These two different gradients should reinforce each other, providing quite a complicated look to the skin tones. With this mixture of orangey pink and bluey purple, it provides quite a long gradient which should be visually quite nice. As you can see, I just brushed on all of the orange and then I've cleaned my brush and I'm brushing on the purple. Because gravity is going to pull some of that orange down, it should start mixing a little bit. It won't be loads, but it will be enough that it kind of isn't a harsh line between the two. I'm also going to paint the purple onto the, the things like knuckles as well. Basically just did anything that's below kind of center chest height, that's purple. So if the arms are down, they're purple. If the arms are up, they're orange. I had already painted that hand orange, so it's going to be a little bit more blended together. Which is why the wash the brush, so there's less contamination between the two colors. Because I want them to be quite different from each other throughout all of the models. I also want them to be consistent so they all look good as a group. Now, considering that was an important step, I probably should have recorded more uh, showing it off now it's dried, but I've moved directly onto the legs. I'm going to do one quick base coat of grey. This will help contrast the quite bright and vibrant skin. We're going for like colder feeling legs as we've created quite a warm kind of cool sunset on the skin gradient which means we need to make the legs look colder and darker which should make the skin pop a lot more. Just like with the skin I'm gonna slack brush some dark blue onto the majority of the legs. There's quite a lot of coverage on here but then I'm gonna fix it with some uh, dry brushing and then some dark speed paints to go over the top of it. Now I'm really happy with how this dark speed paint came out, it was just mostly Gravelord grey with a little touch of blue in it to create this really nice dark blue. This should help pop everything and whilst it was looking shiny it looked kind of like a, like a black ice, looked really really nice, um, pretty proud of the way it came out. And these are our bases. Uh, as you can see, the mud's fully dried now, but we need to do something to this green stuff in order to paint over the top of it. So a quick primer later, and we need to decide on the colors we're gonna choose. I'm gonna use light brown tan flesh and then some fluorescent colors because I wanna go for like a toxic kind of desert look for these guys. I'm feeling kind of Mad Max kind of magenta game for these things. I'm basing with a golden brown and then topping each of these mounts with some of the tan flesh to give kind of a pinky yellow hue, almost like sandstone. Once I've done that, it's uh, dry brushing. I've dry brushed with a white, but that's not the color it's gonna stay. I'm going to try and put some fluorescent paints over the top of it and that's why I brushed white in the first place so that the fluorescent yellow will show up better. Now this is my first time trying this so I'm not exactly certain if it's going to work well which is why I'm kind of unsure. There's a lot of things that can go wrong whilst dry brushing like having too much on the brush or just going too aggressive with it or the paint drying too much. So trying new things can be pretty intimidating when it can destroy everything that you're doing. But I'm pretty happy with the way these looked, but they're just not what I wanted. I think they ended up looking, I, it doesn't look like it on the screen, but these look like they've been tennis ballified. 
I try to rectify this by using some pigments. These give like a dusty effect to the models, which is why it's used often on bases and nothing else. You pretty much just add this powder to water and then the water changes, well the water evaporates and leaves the dust behind. However, because I can't not do things, I decided to add fluorescent paint to the mixture, which didn't actually change it that much. I, there's a chance that it would just ruin the effect of the pigments altogether by gluing them and then they don't look like dust. I thought this might make the environment look more toxic, but it just added to the tennis ball fuzz-like effect. Now, as much as I like this effect, it doesn't go with the models that I chose to put on these things. Now, if I was painting specifically to go on these guys, I could probably make some really nice models, but these bright orange pink guys just don't mesh well with this bright yellow environment. I think it's almost there, but I think I'm just going to err on the side of caution and make the bases look a lot more like the people themselves, which should blend them in with their environment and add cohesion to the whole thing. This is where I start to go a little bit crazy, because I start just dry brushing uh, every fluorescent paint pretty much I have. I'm aiming for a gradient going from pink on one side to orange on the other and then adding a little bit of purple in to kind of increase the contrast. Purple is still a fluorescent paint but it just is more muted than all of the other colors. I'm also gonna try again with mixing the fluorescent with the pigments. This time instead of going for a yellowy pigment I've got this dusty grey. I'm gonna mix that with fluorescent pink and see what happens. Honestly, it made a pretty similar mixture, except for this time the pigment kept falling out of solution and sedimenting back on the back. This actually has like a gradient across all of the different models. You can tell which ones I've painted first by the amount of pink that is left on the model. And here's the final bases. I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. Nice and vibrant with a very clear gradient across them. I'm much more happy with these ones than the tennis ball ones that I have made beforehand. Now you can see the grey gradient only if you kind of point it out. But we're going to move on to the weapons now. Now my goal is to use as many different metallics as I can. Along with this dirty down rust effect to kind of make them look more worn out. I'm going to start by basing with one of my favorite metallics which is a Vallejo airbrush silver. This is just great for a base coat of metallic. I use this most of the time because you can put any metallic over the top of it and it just makes everything look a lot better. And then I'm going to start with all the other different metallics that I have with me. This is just like a dark metal, but I'm also going to use here a, a copper and then a bright brassy gold as well. Uh, and it just hopefully will provide a lot of texture. Now obviously not all of these metals will rust, but once the rust is on there it should add to the kind of cohesion of all of the stuff. Now this dirty down rust stuff is actually quite nice. It is really good, but you have to shake it quite a bit. You can shake it for a good 5 minutes before you even hear the ball start shaking. And because I stored these in a bag, sometimes they're stored upside down and you can't get the lids off at all. Now just one thick coat and leaving them for a while is the best way to use it and then try your best to brush off the bits that you don't need. It oxygenates almost exactly like rust um, and different thicknesses as well as different uh, consistencies when they react with the water. 
uh, make it uh, to have a different rust pattern. Now this is it before I even try to remove any of it, and I know now that I want to remove most of it. It's not that it looks bad, it's just I don't think I need it. The skin is supposed to be the most visually appealing part of this model, but the rust effect kind of takes away from that. So these paints are pretty water soluble, so I'm just going to brush it off with a wet brush and it will leave the rust in the recesses. One of the things that I try and keep in the back of my mind whenever I'm painting like a custom paint color is how, what the main focus is going to be. I really want the skin to be the main focus, so having these rusty elements to it is just going to take away from that. As much as I like the way the rust looks, I feel like I have to remove it at least mostly so that it doesn't become a key focal point. Another thing I'm going to do is to dry brush some of that original silver over the top. It's pretty natural that rust wouldn't grow on the edges as they would be in constant use and would get rubbed off. So if I ever do rusty effects, I'll dry brush on silver afterwards to make it look more grounded in realism. And that's the metal done. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. You can still see the texture of the different metals through. And I'm pretty happy with the black gun metal specifically. It makes it look more cursed. It looks it look almost like Damascus steel, if you know what that looks like. And with much less rust all over the models, I think the whole thing looks better. Only having it in the recesses still makes them visually interesting, but it doesn't take away from the rest of the model. It really doesn't help that rust is already like an orangey colour, so the oranginess of the rust with the skin just made the whole thing blend in together. Now I would consider the three main elements complete. We got the skin, we've got the legs and all of the metal pieces. So it's time to work on all of the little extra bits. These I just use speed paints for. It's one of the things that I do pretty often. I really like the key details, but I tend to lose pace whenever I start with the little small bits. I'm not quite sure why I do this, but it's the main reason why things don't get finished. Almost all little small bits on groups require separate paints, which is a lot of stopping and starting again, which is why speed paints are actually pretty good at doing that. I can put one small blob on and paint all of the like rope effects, all of the belts, all of the uh, leg cloth stuff all in one go and it's super super fast. The main thing I'll do is I'll dry brush on with some white and that's what I do for a lot of all of the little tiny extra bits. One of the things that I really want to put a lot of detail in however is the two heads that we have down below. These are just a big focal detail of what I'm assuming is the leader of these groups. So I've painted them specifically like a dark grey using things like mummified grime and some fluorescent greens to make them look gross. I'm going to dry brush on with a bunch of white, but I'm also going to try and then dry brush on with fluorescent red. This was hoping to make like a really high contrasty uh, complementary color set of skulls. I went a little too thick and a little too hard on the fluorescent red and mixed with white it looks pink. They still look alright, they're just not what I thought they were going to be. Now the true final step is to apply them to their bases. I didn't really leave any footholds or footmarks in these guys, so I'm just going to glue them on as they are. 
Now, if I was really smart, I would have left the pigment step to the very end so I could add some continuity between the model and its base. If I had put that on after it had been glued on, I could put it all over the boots and part of the leg, which would make it look like they've been walking through this desert land for longer than uh, what they currently look like, which is like they've been glued onto the base. It's a little thing, but having continuity between the bases and the guys themselves kind of lends to them looking like a diorama. I put so much work into these guys that it feels like a missed opportunity. I've probably put what double what you would probably want for five little guys for one small army. Now I'm just painting these for fun so I don't really mind that between these five guys I've probably spent between 11 and 15 hours. Which is quite a bit considering they are essentially th three colours. But I ended up making them a, a lot more than that as you can tell. This is mostly just because I was inspired. These guys are a really cool vibe and I'm glad that I put as much effort into these as I did because it's been a lot of fun. These guys are the kind of guys that I do really like painting, but I don't get to do that often because they're not really that present in things like 40k mostly. Uh, that's usually big armor guys. I'm not really into orcs. I'm not a big fan of painting just green things. And yeah, if you like what you've seen, please drop a subscribe. I'm probably gonna keep painting things, uh, probably. I've enjoyed this one, I'm gonna keep going, um, yeah if you wanna see more please stick around.